Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, in our last video, we did the first two questions of Danny's Diner SQL case study. Let's move on to the third and fourth questions. All right. So the question here states, what was the first item from the menu purchased by each customer? So let me just uh, show you the table. So the first table was sales. All right. Where you have the customer ID, order date and product ID. Then you had the menu table. Let me run it. And you have a product ID, product name, and price. And the last table was select star from members. Okay. All right. Members, you had the customer ID and the join date. Okay. So in this case, uh, the question basically is, what was the first item purchased by each customer? Okay, so the two things that we basically want is from each customer, when it says from each customer, we want the customer ID for sure. Okay, and uh, customer ID is in the sales table and first item from the menu. So basically you need the name of the item. Okay, so two things, customer ID and the name of the item. So let me just first define the tables that we want it from. First is from sales and I'm going to join the menu table in that which contains the name of the item. I'll uh, name it as M, sales as S and how are we joining this? So we have, we have seen in the last video, we have something known as product ID which is common across tables. So I'm going to use product ID as the uh, primary key here, okay? primary and foreign keys. All right. Now, what do we want? We want the customer ID, as I said, you know, by each customer. So we'll select customer ID that is from the sales table S dot customer ID. Okay. What else do you want? You want the name of the item that is in the menu table. So M dot product name. Okay. From sales, and we join both of them. Let's let's run this. Let's see what comes out. Okay. So you see, let me just bring it up a little. Okay. So you see, you have the customer ID and the product name now. All right. Now the question is, what was the first item by each customer? So ideally, uh, my result should contain that is A sushi, then B curry, and then C ramen. Okay. These are the three uh, rows I should get. So how do you find out which was the first item? Obviously, you can see which is the first item, but uh, logically in the system, how do you incorporate that? Now, there is something known as window functions in SQL. Okay. And there is a very commonly used window function which helps you, uh, you know, launch a running number to your table. Okay. Attach a running number to your table. That is known as row number. All right. So here it is, row number. Yeah, it's a built-in function. It's uh, known as a window function. Okay, so you apply row number, and I'll show you what this uh, does to your table. So you say row number with an open and close parenthesis, and whenever you use, you are using a window function, you have to use the over clause. Okay, and within the over clause, we will do a small partition now. The reason we need a partition here is because we only want the very first, uh, you know, very first rows of each customer. Okay. So just see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say partition by. Now this partition by applies to this row number. Okay. So let's see. So I want to partition it by each customer. Okay. So I'm going to say partition by customer ID. And also what I want is it to be ordered by because I want the first item purchased. Okay. I don't want the first item that's randomly appearing here. I want to know which was the first item purchased. And how do you know which was the first item purchased? You already have an order date uh, column. Okay. So I will order it by order date. Okay. Now let's see what comes out. So I'm going to run this, just this piece. All right. Now you see, okay, there is no column name. So I'm going to give it a column name. Let's say uh, you can 
you can type as something or you can just simply type the name. I'm going to say row number, R R O num. Okay. Now if I run it, so the column name is now row num. And if you notice closely, you will see running numbers till 6 and then it resets to 1. Why? Because once the customer IDs are done with, so we have partitioned by customer ID here. Okay. So for each customer ID, the row number, that is the row number window function, the running number will keep running. And once that particular customer ID is over and the new customer ID starts, the running number will reset itself and it starts from 1 again. Okay. And you can see once B ends and C starts, it will reset it to 1. So that's the peculiarity about uh, row number window function. It will keep running. Okay. It's a running number. So now you have something which can help you distinguish which was the first item because we have also ordered it by order date. So whatever you are seeing here is, uh, you know, is ordered in terms of the day or uh, date it was purchased on. All right. Now from this, uh, if you notice, we, we don't need the entire table. We only need three rows, A sushi, B curry and C ramen. Okay. Now what is common? between these three rows. The common thing is all of these three rows have row number as one. Okay. So now I think it will be easier for you to find out. So how do we go about doing this? So we have something known as win, uh, CTE, CTE that is common table expressions in SQL. Okay. Now in order to create a CTE, all you have to do is whatever query you have written. Okay. So this is now a new table for you, right? This entire table is, this entire query is a new table for you. So you can put it inside a CTE. In, in order to create a CTE, you just type in with, with keyword and you type in a name for the CTE, uh, this, uh, you know, common table expression. So I'm just going to say CTE. Okay. That's the name I'm going to give it for now. And you just type in the as keyword. Okay. AS. Now. This creates a CT. So basically now, if you want to refer to this entire table, you can use the term CTE. And then you write a very simple query. That is, what do you want from this? You want the customer ID. You also want the product name. And you want it from where? You want it from the CTE. Okay. I hope you are with me now. Now, the reason why I did not use S dot customer ID or M dot product name here is because I am taking the customer ID directly from CTE table. Now, within the CTE table, I have already defined, uh, you know, where this ID or where this name comes from. So I don't need to redefine it now because if you look at the table here, it says customer ID and this entire table is a CTE table. Okay. The name of the table is CTE. You can also name it as CT1, CT2, whatever you want, okay? It doesn't matter as long as it's not a keyword, okay? So you can name it. I just named it at CT just to make it clear. And you can you don't need to define the aliases here, okay? From CTE. And what is the criteria? We want to make sure the row number is 1, okay? Where row number equals 1. What we'll do now is we'll select the entire thing and we'll execute it and there you go so this is your required output three cus uh, three customer ids and what was the first item from the menu they purchased all right so that was the third question for you let's move on to the fourth question this is actually exciting you know when you uh, try to logically reason it out and then solve it all right so moving on to the fourth question that is what is the most purchased item on the menu and how many times was it purchased by all customers? So in this case, you can notice it says all customers. So we don't need a customer by customer output. You can actually just have one single row, which gives you the name of that one product and how many times it was purchased. For example, if it is, let's say, curry, uh, how many times? Let's say it's purchased 10 times. Okay, So you just need curry and 10 like that. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the tables first. So I want the sales table. 
Now you may wonder why I want the sales table. I want the sales table because let me just show you. I want the sales table because it wants us to give us give us uh, give it how many times. Okay. So how do you figure out how many times something was ordered? The only way to figure it out is using the sales table. That is, uh, the you know, the query will basically count the number of times a product has appeared. All right. So if you look at the other tables, that is menu and members, there is no way you can find out how many times something is ordered. Okay. Because you have an order date here and the customer ID here, you can figure out how many times something was ordered. Okay. That's why we are using the sales table. So I'm going to say from uh, from sales, I'll name it as as I want to join the menu table because I want the most purchased item. That is the product name. I also I want. Okay. From menu, and we'll join this using our product IDs. So M dot product ID. Now, what do I want here? As I said, I want the product name first. So I'm going to say m dot product name because product name only appears in the menu table comma what else do you want do you want how many times so you can take a count here okay you can use the count of what count of product name itself okay count of product name yeah that will give you the uh, actual so let's say a product appears 10 times the count will give you the number 10 here and uh, I'm just naming this column as prod uh, count. Yeah, it looks good when the output comes out. Otherwise, it will say no name for your column. Okay. So let me try to run it. Okay, I see an error. Let's see what the error is. So the error says uh, menu product name is invalid in the select because it is not containing either an aggregate function or group by clause. Okay, you notice what the error is. See, we have used the aggregate function here, an aggregate function that is count. So whenever you use an aggregate function, you should always, you know, uh, let it follow by a group by uh, clause. Okay. So you always have to use a group by whenever you, use, you are using an aggregate function in your select statement. So group by, uh, we can say product name itself. So largely, uh, one thing I follow is whenever if you're confused which product group by to use, usually in the select statement itself, whatever excluding what is contained in the aggregate function, you can use the other column name. It is not always the case, but majority of the times. Okay. So now if you run it, let's see what comes out. Okay. So we have uh, shortened it down. So we have the product names and the product count. That is, okay, I can now either say it's the order count okay yeah so order count is, is 4 8 and 3 now what is our required result what is the most purchase item so the most purchase item here is ramen right that is 8 so how do you get ramen here you cannot say or uh, select something where order count is 8 that's not a scalable option because you don't really know what the order count is going to be every time. Yeah. Let's say the uh, database gets updated in the background and the order count goes up to 12. So your query will be obsolete, right? It will, it cannot be used for uh, every uh, other uh, requirement whenever you have something in the future. So for that, what we do is let's, uh, let's try to, you know, arrange it in descending order. Okay. So I'll say order by. Uh, order by this count in descending. So when you do a descending order, what will happen is the one with the highest count will be on top. Yeah. So now ramen is on top. Now what I need to do is I just need to keep ramen and exclude the others. So in other, in, I think in MySQL you can use something known as limit. And if you do limit and one, it will give you just one result. In SQL Server, you can do that using the top keyword. Okay, so I'm going to say top one. So what I want is I just want the top one result, top one row. Okay, so I'm going to run this, and there you go. So ramen eight is our required output. Now, if you see, if you do top two, 
it will give you the first two rows from your output so that is something we don't need so i'm just going to say top one and you can just go ahead and run it so that's about it we'll solve the remaining questions in our upcoming videos hope you enjoyed the video if you are yet to subscribe please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video i'll see you with the other video in a couple of days thank you